Um, we're going to get started this morning. Um, uh, we're going to open the, this message with prayer. But before we do that, I want to just, uh, in a sense, set our expectation. Um, this, this was interesting. I came, uh, I was sitting next to Ev, which is my wife. Uh, I don't know if I introduced myself. I'm Pastor Nate, pastor here. Um, honored to uh, stand in this in this pulpit, but really just um, uh, really being under shepherd uh, and, and, and carry a message that the Lord would have each and every week um, for us. And I and I, I really believe that it is for us. Um, but anyway, I was, I was we were getting done with worship, and my wife leaned over and she handed me uh, her her Bible, and she said, "Hey, I was thinking." This came to me, and I was like, huh, that's interesting. I just was praying that. And, um, and it actually gets to the end of my message, what we're going to talk about today. And so I don't want to, I, I want to try to stick in, into the groove where I think it's going to supposed to be. Um, but we're going to end with Psalms 91, which is not so much a, uh, a passage of, of protection as it is a passage of praise. Um, and not even praise, but a declaration. It was not written by David. It was written by Moses. Uh, it was repenned by David. Um, but it was originated uh, when, when the temple, when the presence of God uh, was placed in the, in, the, in the tent by Moses. He wrote, this, he wrote this and he said, I will say to the Lord this. And then he makes this declaration. It's, it's, it's really interesting, the language that you see in Psalms 91, how I'll, here you have each person saying of the Lord with their own mouth, but then it, it moves into like verse three, and then there's like declarations made to you. And it says, you will not fear, and you will not this, and, 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 and you know, he, he will be a shield for you, and, and though, you know, there's terror by night, you, you don't have to fear, and though this, you don't have to. And so it's just really powerful, really a song, or in a sense, that's sung unto you. So it's a, it's a declaration that I would say, but then we're singing it to, to one another. Can you, uh, you maybe have heard like love songs or songs where people sing it to you about their love for you. It, it's, it's really cool just to think about God telling to you and proclaiming to you or what's being proclaimed is God's protection, his provision, his, all of these kind of things. And so it's just, it's really powerful. Well, <clears throat> um, this is the, so in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and this is the scripture that my wife had given me, and, uh, and I had just prayed this upstairs. Uh, it says this, Paul said this, When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquent, eloquence or wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing uh, while I was with you except for Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear with much trembling that my message uh, and my preaching would not be with persuasive words of wisdom but with demonstration and power and so that your faith would not rest in the wisdom of men but the power of God. And so he said, I've I'm, I'm come to you and I proclaimed God to you. Not uh, eloquently, not in any way, but I, my my. My hope was, Paul saying to the church at Corinth, that you, your, your faith would not rest in me, Paul, but it would rest in the power of God. And as thinking about that, of how even just today, that heart that we would, what we're talking about, it being brighter and brighter, having a path that shines brighter and brighter, that, that your faith wouldn't rest in just, a, 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 in a sense, a, a message, but the author of that message. That there would be just this hope, and even as the word of God is spoken this morning, and this was this was my prayer that, that that it would go forth. And Father, thank you that you accompany your word. And so where where His word is spoken, the Bible tells us He accompanies His word. He watches over it to perform it. And so. I expect to meet with him today. I expect his power, his ability, all of that to be present today. And, and the picture that, that we're going to talk about today, and I just wanted to make this declaration, in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, in my prayer is that there would be a picture given to you and me of hope. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, he said, I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened and that you would know the hope to which you're called. Did you know you can have the wrong hope? You can have a false hope. You can, and, and, and a false hope could, could leave you hopeless. And that's not what God wants. And so that's just been my, was my, my prayer this morning that what would happen is that, that the Lord would open our eyes of our heart and that we would know a ho the hope to which we've been called. 
And, um, and so, Father, thank you today for, uh, for you being present uh, with your word. We thank you that we came to meet with you, to hear from you. We thank you that you are um, so present, a very present help in time of need. And we just tell you this morning that we need you. More than ever before, we're just aware of our need and our, 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 our just, um, Father, the demand that we, uh, that we must have you. That you are the one that sustains our breath. You are the one that wakes us up and gives us life. You're the one uh, that is holding everything together. And Father, we just thank you that we would see that you're faithful today. That your faithfulness would be on display. That we would see your goodness and your, in your glory as only you could reveal it to us. We ask you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're in this series, Brighter and Brighter. I believe that that's the path that God, God has for you and me. You know, we know that the Bible tells us that in, in this world, there's going to be trials and tribulations. In this world, as, as you get closer to the end of Jesus' return, he tells us it's going to get dark. But guess what? He says this, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, but the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter and brighter. It's brighter and brighter. It means that it, that it, it becomes, it, it, there's, there's a brightness, that, a fullness. The brighter and brighter, the, that uh, Proverbs 4, 18 talks about all the way to noonday, like to the fullness. God wants your, my path to shine to a path of fullness. And so what I, we talked about last week, it, we talked a little bit about the path um, and we were going to talk about the path of the righteous, brighter and brighter. We, I want to get to righteous. I want to get to brighter and brighter. But I got to go back to the path. I, I can't talk to you this morning about your righteousness. I can't talk to you about these kind of things because what I found is, I and maybe it, it, I don't think it's actually. I know it's not just me. When I hear something, it's easy for me to go, "Oh, that's good," and then really not. Put application to it, or something hits me this week. Maybe you know it could be one of a hundred things, and it just causes you and me to not keep our good news shoes on, which we talked about last. And so we we have a little bit of the gripe, or we have a little bit of the complaint, or 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 we we have this certainty of what's going to be what's to come, and it's not good news. And there's complaining, and there's fear, and there's all kinds of stuff that goes along. And so we're going to go back today, and we're going to talk again about uh, uh, the path that God has for you and me. We're going to talk about um, not so much the good news shoes, but we're going to talk about the, the path and staying on the path. The path that shines brighter and brighter. Because there is also a path that doesn't shine very bright. Uh, it, it shi it's pretty dark, actually. And that's not where God wants you and me. And, and so the, this morning, I wanted to title this morning's message, Not Weary, Not Weary. I, I don't believe God wants us weary. Did you know that the enemy would love to get you weary? When you're weary, that's when you're the easiest to take out. It, it, when you're tired, that's when the best fights happen. You know what I'm talking about? When you're tired, when you're pressed, when you've been going, 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 Right? And, and, and when you're tired, when you're low on sleep, when you're, and, and another thing and another thing, and then you've heard this statement, this phrase, that was just the straw, right? It, it was just, yeah, they broke the camel's back. It was, it was the last straw. Like you just, normally I wouldn't be like this, but just, it's just, bu, 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 bu. and so there's this, you might call it an excuse, but really it's a reason. It's a reason that when you're tired, when you're tired, you're easy to defeat. This is where you can even look at in, 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 uh, in the Gospels where Jesus was led by the Spirit of God in the wilderness. And, and it wasn't until he was there for a while, when he was weak, when he was tired, that the enemy came to tempt him. Right? And then when he left, he said he's going to come back for a more what? Opportune time. Opportune time. And so um, the enemy would like to have you weary. But, uh, and so we're going to talk about that. But before we do, I want to let go, just do a little bit of, uh, a little bit of review because it, all this is going to build on one another. Um, Luke chapter 2, because we're talking about a brightness, a path that is to shine brighter and brighter and brighter. And I think sometimes um, there can just be this make-believe because the picture that we hold in our heart as in that which is so true to us is one of hopelessness and despair. Like there are reality of tomorrow because of what we hold and what we acknowledge today is, is one that is, um, I, I wrote this, it's, it's really evolution. Anybody here believe in creation? 
yet we so often abide and live by evolution. You're saying, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the state I'm in today determines where I'll be tomorrow. And even in the, with the goodness and the glory of God, God can kind of take Cro-Magnon man and you know, move me from monkey to Cro-Magnon man, you know what I mean? Like to like eventually become, you know, if we have billions and billions of years, I can kind of, things can kind of turn. If, if things, if something bad has happened, well, God can kind of evolve it, you know, and this amoeba could become, we look at our, so many times in our life, we, we see something bad and the picture is, well, maybe it'll get a little better. That's not how God works. He's a creator. Where there was darkness, he said, a little bit brighter. No, he just said light. So we have to understand that we have a creator. And this is part of the path shining brighter and brighter. And this brighter and brighter is the glory of God, the goodness of God. And to some degree, as much as the the gospel has been um, maybe easy, like just believe in God and you can go to heaven. Well, the devil believes in God and he's not going to heaven. Um, the Bible says, tells us how, how you're saved. You believe in your heart and confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord. Ultimately, it's not a, a word of, of your mouth. It's that which is of your heart, what you believe, right? And it's with the heart you believe and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, which is unto sur- surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. But to, for some, for some, to some degree, just because maybe we're looking for numbers or we're looking for whatever, we may maybe make salvation um, something that's so simple or so easy or so undemanding that like you and I don't really have to take up our cross. We don't have to lay down our life. Um, it doesn't really matter, but there, it does. It really does. And so as much as to some degree where we have, have done that to be just inclusive, really inclusive, because it does include everybody, but just make it to where there's no demand or no choice that you really have to make. You know, it's free, but it costs you everything. But as much as we've done maybe a disservice that way, we've also done a great disservice to the gospel. The good news. It's not just going to heaven one day. When Jesus opened a book and he sat down, he opened a book and, and he read what the gospel is. And we got to get that back. And that's what, that's what this is about, the, the good news, the true good news of the gospel, that you and I would hold true, have good news continually. And so let's, let's just a little bit of history. I, wanna, I want you to see what happens when God shows up on the scene. I'm going to give you just one scripture because you'll see that this pattern is throughout the Bible. But it's when we see at Christmas time, when we hear that good news, salvation has come to you and me. And that's in Luke chapter 2, when there's these, these shepherds. And how many of you know, when they're out in the field, shepherds are not like your little mama's boy. They're not soft people. They kill the lions. They kill the bears. But what, 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 the, there, there's no night lights. You know what I'm saying? Like, if there's a shadow... They got to go to the shadow, right? So they're not, uh, they're not wimpy guys, all right? And so go ahead and put it up there, Luke chapter 2, 9 through 11. And it says this, it says, The angel of the Lord appeared unto them. So that's an angel. And let's just define this now because this will help us later on in the service. But an angel is a messenger. Yeah? Okay. A demon. A demon is an angel. Is a demon an angel? Okay. What is an angel? messenger. What is a demon? A messenger. Okay. So demons are messengers. Just the same way that we have angels that bring a message. We have demons, which are angels that bring a message. They're just dark angels instead of angels of light. So let's just understand that and just define that, that simply that they are messengers. And you know, they're uh, right now, even right now, there are, there are messages to you that are not just natural. You know, messages to you that are not bringing light and glory to shine around you. They have a whole lot of something else called heaviness, darkness, and it's a message of hopelessness. Not one of uh, unto you where there, there's something born a savior. It's more like demise. But it says, an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. 
and they were filled with great fear. Isn't it interesting that, that when, when God showed up on the scene, what they sensed, they weren't afraid of like terror of darkness, they sensed power. And so this is where I, w- I want us to really hold, get, gra- grab a hold of, and that is that we would not have words that are enticing words of man's wisdom, but our faith, our faith would rest in the power of God. Like, no matter the circumstance, the power of God. Evolution, no. Creation. Like, the, the, out of something, can these bones live, Lord, you know, then say to the bones. Like, this is, we have to get back to these kind of things. And the earth will be filled with the glory of God. The glory is the power of God, the goodness of God, the fullness of God, the brightness of God, the fear, the tremble of God. We, we defined glory last week, right? And he says, and, and they were with great fear. And here's what he says, do not fear. And it, do not fear, for behold, I bring good, to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you this day is born in, in the city of David, Christ the Lord. I don't know if I got that exactly right there. I was quoting it. So there, but there's a Savior born to you. In the middle of the glory, when you, when, you, when you see the glory, when you see the power of God, what you're going to hear is this message of a Savior. You're all, whenever any time the glory of God shows up, you'll always hear the message of one that is with you, for you, to save you for your good. Wow, this, this is cool. So the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter, the bright, brighter and brighter, all the way until uh, noonday. Let's keep going here. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. This is a little bit, um, just a little bit of, of, of the righteous, just to settle this right now, because you might think you're not righteous. Well, righteousness doesn't come by your works. It came by Jesus Christ and your and my surrender and coming under and saying, I'm going to trust on and come under the direction of Jesus. All right. For our sake, he, who, he, uh, he was made, made him, Jesus, to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So the path of the righteous is, though, is those or are those um, that believe on Christ and have re- received him as their Lord and Savior. All right? Okay, so that, that, that foundation. All right. So <laughs> we talked last week about um, having the right foundation so, uh, so that you can make it to the picture. You know, we had those pictures and we had these rocks on here. We had some good news shoes and we talked about in Ephesians chapter 6, talking about how you and I fight. Because right now, whether you realize it or not, there's a fight going on. Everyone in here is in a fight. Some of you might be in more fights than, than others. Um, to this week, I felt like there's been, I just God has been so good everywhere, every way. And yet, and yet, there's... This and this and this and this and this. And it was, so, it was just kind of funny because there's this going on and this going on and this happened and this happened. And, and then, uh, it, it, then I'm driving in my truck to go to uh, Oklahoma and all of a sudden my truck, the tra- I mean, it's only got 100,000 miles on it, 110,000 miles on it. And it's like, boom. And I'm like, this is a Duramax, right? And that's like an expensive transmission. You know what I mean? Like Duramax, that should be 300,000, right? And I'm like, you got to, what? You got to laugh. Why, why can you laugh? Why can you rejoice? Because, because, because my, my, my conditions in life is not dependent upon the things that are happening to me. My source, all of these kind of things. And so I just, I actually, I think it's kind of funny that the enemy, would, he would love to try to, but yet at the same time, he's going to be the one paying for it. Like, like, and he can't take my joy. You know, but there's very, very real. There's just, there's a tax to try to take your joy, to cause you to get weary, to try to get tired to where his attacks would work. All right. Um, anyway, so we looked at this, the good news shoes, and we were talking about having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And the shoes, the, that of peace is that of Irene, where everything works together, comes together, and peace means you're together with God. Let me ask you this. If with God, all things are, but without God, there's a lot of things that are impossible. So the good news shoes, you understand that you have, you fitted for yourself. You're not wearing somebody else's shoes. Fitted for yourself, God for you, God with you. Whatever it is you're facing right now, you, this is where, uh, yeah, go, let's go to Isaiah, and we'll, then we'll pick up into this, this week's message. Isaiah 40, 31. It says, those who wait, or those who hope 
in the Lord, those who wait. That word wait or that word hope, depending on your translation, it also is that word tether, rope. Those who are tied to, hooked up with. Those who wait, those who hope those with the Lord, what will happen? It says they shall renew their strength. They won't be tired. They'll mount up on wings like eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. There's something about being hooked up with somebody that's stronger than you. That changes everything. And this is where we got to be. We got to get, in a sense, when I say got to be, what, what am I talking about? I'm talking about you and I grabbing a hold of something that is not make-believe but truth. The truth of God with me, God for me, the truth of God's power, the truth of, and we're going we're gonna, to um, unpack this more today, but I, I, just, I believe that this is a key for you and me walking in and seeing the things of God come about in our life. You know, the plan of God for your and my life, there are steps that you and I are supposed to be taking, but because of bad news or because of fear, we got, we got feet that are frozen or our feet are in retreat. And God told you about a promise. He said, and yet there's an application for, there's, there's things that we're to be doing, but because we're, we, we don't have a picture of hope, we have a picture of fear, we have a picture of despair, we have a picture of what was yesterday, and we have this, this, this worldview that God is a God, you know, like that can only work with evolution. Like this evolving for a little bit better, a little bit better. Let me ask you, what could happen in a moment with God? That quick. Like just, but he needs your agreement. This is, this is the key. He needs your agreement. He needs my agreement. The promises of God are yes and amen. He said yes. What do you say? This is, the, this is the most basic, the most simple. He says this, you say, maybe, if, when, if this, this, this. Well, that's not, so I don't know. Maybe we can only go this far. If he says, yes, all the promises of God are yes and amen, even our prayers, and this is what we're going to get to, not growing weird. Like Our prayers haven't been... The, 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 well, I just don't know what the will of God is. And we're praying hope-filled prayers, but the, our hope is not even uh, actual hope. We're, we're praying for our own desires that aren't even a lot of times in line with God's plan or his will for our life. And we're wondering why we're disappointed because we're not really supposed to be praying just for things that aren't, don't have its foundation in a promise. The will of God is found in the promises of God. And if you and I will just sit, hook up with that, the promises of God, and pray the promises of God, we'll find that, that I'll be able to pray from, for, and know that I'm praying according to his will and know that he, he hears me and know that I'll have the things that I ask of him. We're going to get to that here in just a moment. But here we are, um, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 um, through 19. Again, Galatians 6, 9, he tells us, do not grow weary in well-doing, because if you don't grow weary, you'll reap. And this is another reason why you and I, the enemy would love for you and I to get tired and to quit is because he doesn't want you to be there because God is faithful. God is faithful. But he, doesn't, he, he wants you to get tired. And, and I'm just telling you, there's a way to not grow tired. And it is that tethered to the Lord. It is that of hope. And we're going to look at outlining hope of tomorrow. This is, it's going to be helpful. Okay? Um, but he, Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 through 19. It says, though the fig tree should not blossom. Oh, man, I was hoping to have figs this year. And though there's no fruit on the vines. You know, I was going to get a bonus. And I guess we're not going to go on that vacation now. Uh, and then I have a transmission call. And then, da, 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 and then, da, da. Oh, man. man. I wish we wouldn't have taken that tax money throughout the year. I had to pay in now. Oh, and we have this come up. Though the yield of olives should fail. Well, everything was lined up, and I just thought it was going to go through, and then it just... Pfft. And though the fields produce no food. I, I, there's no food. It, the fields, though the flock should be cut off from the fold and though there's no cattle in the stalls, 
Like, there's no, there's, we have no savings. <laughs> so let's just despair. This is, and we talked about this last week, this is where Habakkuk, a prophet, there's three chapters. He's crying out to the Lord, hearing to hear from the Lord. He says, I want to hear from you. In, chap, in, in verse 1, chapter 2, he says, I'm going to get a pen. I'm going to be ready. Basically, see if you're going to say. And he said, get your pen. Then the Lord shows up in chapter 2. and He says, get your pen and get ready to write because what I'm going to tell you, it, it, it's true. And it's very, it, it very important for you to hold and not only for you to hold but for others to hold. Because this prophecy, this word that I'm about to speak to you, it, it surely will come to pass. Though it tarries, wait for it. Though it tarries, it might seem slow in coming. He said, wait for it. Wait for it. And we know that the fruit of the Spirit is only possible in your and my life when we receive the Word of God. Amen. We're looking so many times, we're looking for the, God's fruit in our life, but yet what He says, He said yes and amen. We said maybe. We'll see. Instead of staying in this place of yes, you're like, this is, sounds like faith. Yes. Yes, this is what this is, faith. And you know what he asked? He asked, will I find faith? Will I find faith when on the earth when I return? That's a question for you. Will he find faith in your house? Will he find faith in your heart? Will he find faith? Faith looks, has, has a picture that is different than what it looks like right now, but it has that picture because it's fully persuaded of something. A picture, you can only hold that picture, and the, there could be no figs in the, on the trees. There could be no oil. There could be everything. Listen, it's like this. I was talking, uh, I was on my way home yesterday. I was talking with Lance Becker. We were talking about the Arkansas Razorbacks, all right? And this is the perfect analogy and example and of how, have you ever seen how, and it's not just the Razorbacks, there's many teams that have this, it just seems like um, the Minnesota Vikings and the Razorbacks have the same, they can play really good for three quarters, you know, or one half, I mean, I, the, the Hogs up by 20, lose by five. Explain this one to me, here, let me explain it. We're doing really good. Now hold on to the lead. What got you there will keep continue to. But it's like all of a sudden it moves to this playing safe. And yeah, and here's this. This it's it's just this. We talk about it. We we're going to throw out a name of another college that if they get scored on with two touchdowns and they're down by 21 at half, is it that big a deal? No. Why? Because they know who they are, and they're going to come back out, and they're going to come and run it down your throat. And who is that? Somebody give me a name. Al Why do you know this? In Arkansas. You know because they know who they are. And because they know who they are, it doesn't matter what happens. The outcome is what they know. And so they can have a, something blow up or something big, and it's not everyone's head's not hanging. And there, there's got to be this, I know who I am. I, I'm one that God gave his son Jesus for. What is man that you're mindful of him, that you would, well, who is this? Because when something happens, I, I can know, listen, though there's terror, though there's this, though there's that, though there's this, and someone can tell me this and, and believe God for me and with me. Though this is going on, let me say it. I'll say to the Lord, he's my strength. I'll say he's my refuge. I'll say this. But let me tell you, he's a shield. He's like a, a favor. And he goes before you and behind you. And he surrounds you with favor, like a shield. Well, you know what favor means? Changes the rules. Somebody tell me about his favor. Somebody tell me about protection and, and from pestilence. Yeah, well, this and this. Have you heard about the new blah, 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 blah? Well, let me tell you. Have you heard that Jesus, he came, he paid the price, and God is this? Have you heard? Man, there's something about that. And you get to the end, and he's like, and God's like, whoo, he shows up. And just it, You have that space where you got promise and fulfillment. What's the space in between? It's what you say. That's the space in between. 
And so he says, though, that there's no, there's no food, there's no this, there's no that, there's no this. He goes on and says this in verse 18. He says, yet I will, I'll exalt the Lord. Put it in the NASB. The, uh, uh, that's 95. All right. That's all right. Exalt. To extol or to exalt. or Some translations say rejoice, but if you were to look up that word, it, it means to, to stand over, or let me say this, I will triumph. I'll triumph. Yet I will triumph, how? So this is that Bama, Arkansas, like he's rejoicing in the God of his salvation. He's saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, the God of my salvation, you know, I know there's no oil, I know that there's this, I know that there's that, I know they just scored a touchdown, I know that they just they said this, I know that we got this doctor's report, I know that, I know that my kids just told me to go fly a kite, I know blah, 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 whatever it might be, yet I, I'm going to try it. Yes. Wow, that's pretty powerful. Yet I, because why? Because, and I will rejoice and I'll rejoice in the God of my salvation. There's something about you and I understanding my triumph does not come from me. It comes from my faith in the one who has the ability. And this is where we got to get back to the power of God, the fear of God. You know, you don't fear what you can control. And this is honest truth. Maybe we're, we, we are kind of off in the church. We can control how service goes. We control it. Nobody's scared of a fire in a fireplace. But let me get a bucket of gasoline and dump it and light a match. Now you tell me how many people scream. Because it's not contained. God is not a God that should be contained. But we have this little God box. God is, God, this is what God can do. And I'll call on him to maybe get out of the box when I get done doing all that I can do. And so I don't know him as God Almighty. I just know him as God might he. That's terrible. This is where we're at. But the earth is to be filled with the glory of God. The whole earth will see the glory, the magnificent, the splendor, the, the tremble, the fear, the awe of God. And it's to be seen, and he's coming back. Listen, the Bible tells us he's coming back for a glorious church. One that, I mean, just beholding the glory of God. So there, there, there's got to be some changes here. So you and me to stay on a path that is brighter and brighter, and it has a lot to do with our mouth. It has a lot to do with our mouth. In agreement. And saying who he, God says he is, in agreement. What, is, what does agreement look like with God? What does agreement look like with, with what you're faced right now? This is like the, the Holy Spirit's coming right now and you know where your mouth has not been in agreement with what God says he would like to do or what his promises or his will would be concerning that. And right now he's saying, you know where you've been not, you haven't been trusting me at all with this and there's correction and, and you know what you get to say? I will say of the Lord. This is, it's that, it's just, it's, I'm, again, we're talking about staying on the path that shines brighter and brighter. Thank you, Lord. Again, the fruit of the Spirit is always, is always a result of receiving the seeds of God's Word. I just don't know if I can. No, 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 no. I just don't. I, I won't. It's not, it's not about I don't know. It's, it's I'm unwilling. See, the, the Word of God, everything, faith is about our will. All of what we're talking about is our will. It's not whether or not I can, it's whether or not I will. Because I trust what I see in my experience for this long over where, where, what, what is speaking to me. You know what I'm talking about. All the creation, all the, 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 word, the very word of God. So, 
Anyway, if you'll tend the promise, <laughs> tend the promise. All right, let's go, let's go here. Let's go to John chapter 1, uh, or 1 John uh, 5, uh, 13 through 15. And this is, we're going to get to praying prayers again. We need to pray prayers where God can move. We need to pray prayers where God can move. I'm going to give this testimony yet again about sitting here on a Wednesday night and, and having to, knowing we're supposed to sell our house and having to say, God, I can't ask you for that because I can't do that. And I don't want to have to fight that fight of faith. I don't want to fight the fight of faith. I just would rather have what I can do and just what it just would do. I'd rather just do what I can do on my I don't want to have to fight and have to believe you. And I know that the thoughts that are going to come, I'm going to have to stand against and I'm going to have to answer those thoughts. I cannot fight the fight of faith without answering the thoughts. But when I answer the thoughts with praise, something goes silent. The Bible tells us that in, in Psalms 8.2, it tells us that praise stills the enemy. This, this psalm is 91 that we're going to get to. Did you know that, that this psalm, it's not a psalm about protection as much as it is a one of praise? Did you know that, you, you probably don't know this, I, I just found this out myself when I was like, Lord, that, what do you want me to have the people do though? I'm going to teach the word, but like, be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, You're deceiving yourself, thinking something's happening. What do you want us to do? Let me bring this to, I'm not even to the close, but like this is where I got to. Like, what do you want us to do? Give me the end. He said, I want you to say of the Lord. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll say of the Lord who he is. I'll say of him. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to say who he is. And I'm like, okay, we can do that. And he said, and I'm like, I know where that's found. That's Psalms 91. So I go start looking in Psalms 91. And I'm like, this, this psalm, did you know, this, it's, in the Midrash, it's the song, it's a song that's described, a song against demons. In the, song, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, it's one of four psalms that is a, a, a message to and against evil spirits. Okay, what is, what is it, what's an angel? Uh, what's a demon? A messenger. A, a song to shut the messenger up. That this is that there was a song to the people, to the people of God in the wilderness when they hadn't stepped into the promised land. When Moses is out there and he's God's with them, he's a cloud, he's a fire, he's there, he is. But there's still attacks going on, and they needed something. And God, God perfected something. He perfected praise to still an enemy, to silence an avenger. This is Psalms 8 2. He to silence him. And here you see Psalms 91, written by Moses, a declaration of who God is to him and who he'll be for you. And who will be for you? You'll see, you see that God introduces himself as Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sitkanu, righteous. So you look and you see who, he, how, who and how he is introduced to the children of Abraham, the people, the Israel. And, yet, and then he says, this is what I will be for you. And you won't have to fear. And, you won't, and this is a song. This is a psalm. It's, it's put to music. He's not... Could, I, I was thinking about like trying to make a song out of Psalms 91. Like, you don't have to fear. I mean, my song's not as good as I was in my head. <laughs> you know, like... Can you, can you imagine dancing with somebody? As you, as you talk about, we're going to look at that here in, in just a moment, but uh, it's 1 John 5, 13 through 5. Um, 1 John, he says, I write these things to you uh, who believe in the name of the Son of God. So you, a lot of us believe in the name of the Son of God. As a, as, a, as a Christian, we believe in the name of the Son of God. And that you may know that you, uh, that you, may know that you have eternal life. I, I believe, you know, I, that's what I believe. I just don't know if I believe the rest. 
So I'm writing to you who believe so that you can have and fully receive salvation. He said, and this is the confidence, this is that Bama mentality, this is that confidence, the surety, the confidence, no matter what, if there's oil in the stalls or cows in the stalls or oil in the vats or whatever we have towards him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Okay, well, what is, okay, let's go to the verse. And if we know he hears us, hey, are you already there? And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we ask of him. This is important. Where I see so often people get hung up is the will of God. Is the will of God. And so I wanted to establish that, what I had mentioned earlier, 2 Peter 1, 2 through 4. God has given you and I. He said, uh, And my grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God, in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So what's multiplied to you? Grace, peace, how? From knowing about who he is. Grace and peace is multiplied to you when we know who he is. He says his divine power. You could say it this way, his glory. His, 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 you, you, has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. No, it's just about heaven. No, all things that pertain to what? Through the knowledge of him who has called us to his own glory and to his own glory, by which he granted us his precious and very great promises. He's given us everything that we need in this life. He gave it by his power. What did he give us? Promises. Promises. So that through them, you might become a partaker. Let me just define that word partaker. I think it, it, it's, it's hugely important that you, um, let's see here. Uh, uh, where, where did I put that? A partaker. Um, it's not a partner, a, par, a joint participant. There it is. A joint participant or fellowship together. That you might go together or you know together, be knit, be hope, be tied to his divine nature, that there heaven's assistance in natural affairs. Let me say it this way. Heaven's assistance in natural affairs. There is to be, for the people of God, heaven's assistance in natural affairs. The children of God, who did not have a covenant of blood of Jesus. They had a blood covenant Okay, of go- bulls and goats. And people knew them because they knew their God. They saw heaven's assistance in natural affairs. But how much more are we to have that we have a new covenant, an everlasting covenant, where the priest w- offered one time, Jesus offered one time his own blood and sat down, never to offer again because it was fully paid for. How much more should we have heaven's assistance in natural affairs? I should have heaven's assistance and people should know me by my God. This is what he's saying. And how, do you, how is that to come? How is it to know? A promise. A promise that he says yes and amen. And you and I could either say, oh, we'll see when. Or we could say amen. And I can hold to it. I can hold to that promise. And I can pray promises and I can ask anything according to his will which I can see if it's a promise it's his will and there's divine power to carry it out so find a promise and pray I'll pray a promise to you these are promises there's promises for you for what the verse before for life and your life in him anything in life yeah that just sounds too good to be true yes It is too good because he's that good, but it is true. Luke chapter four, we got to go here because we we, we quote this stuff, but do we we really know we got to see it again? See it again, what? Jesus, he he went into the temple, Luke four. He says, and the scroll, he, he goes into the temple and he opens the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, which was given to him. He unrolled it and found the place where it was written. This is a prophecy about one that was to come. And he says, I am he. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. You know what the spirit is? Power, breath, pneuma, life. 
You saw some tornadoes? Anybody see some tornadoes lately? Devastating power. What you thought would be solid? Oh, you can't move that truck. Semi-trucks on top of, I mean, crazy. Brick. I thought brick didn't crumble. I thought brick was safe in a tornado. No. Not, when, not in, a, in where there's real... Whew. This is that word. Breath. Wind. Spirit. Power. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Power is upon me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim. Well, wow, that's interesting. This is how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. To tell you something. Why don't you do something for me? Well, I wish God would just do something for me. God anointed to tell you something. So what? Okay, whatever. I guess I'll figure this out on my own. He didn't ask you to figure something out on your own. He asked you to listen and agree. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. What does good news to the poor sound like? I don't know, but there's a lot of promises. There's a lot of promises. Maybe you're in a place of, of, of poverty. This is where I started, so I guess I could make a turn. And, and, you know, I can start here on this side of the tracks. And, you know, maybe one day you, I'll, I'll, I'll get to have a 401K. Or you can start where it doesn't matter where you can start. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was without form and board. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to this and where Jesus came. He was sent to proclaim something? Yeah, that's what happened in Genesis 1. There was a proclamation. And it, things changed. And that's the way it's still to be. We believe, therefore we speak. I believe, therefore I have spoken. This is how salvation takes place in you and me. So many times we go, well, I'm saved because I believed in my heart and confessed with my mouth. And it's like, okay, I'm saved now. Did you know something supernatural took place? That the old is gone, a new, new cre a creation, new creation, where, where the enemy, Satan, recognizes Peter. I know I'm Paul, I know, but who are you? He recognized a new creation. There was something supernatural that took place from words? Yes. From words. Supernatural. Again, heaven, heaven's assistance in natural affairs. This is what he came to do, in the sense, what is the He proclaimed the good news to the poor. He sent me to, to do what? To tell you, tell you, okay, like you got some money or something? Like, I thought you were going to write me a check, or like, you got, did you bring the hammer to break the shackles? <laughs> liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And you see this, this is what's so cool. Jesus proclaims it, and then he demonstrates it. He proclaims it, and then he walks it out. This is what it's to be for you and me. There's a proclaim, but then there's a path. There's a path. And you know, there's a path, and sometimes there's rocks on the path. But if, as long as the picture is what I'm seeing and what I'm holding, and we're going to get to keeping that picture there. He says, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, I'm here to proclaim to you the year of Jubilee, where debts are canceled, 50 years, a year of all debt's gone, all wa washed away, freedom, a year of celebration. And he, <laughs> this is the best. And he rolled up the scroll and he said, gave it back. And he sat down. And everyone's eyes looked at him like, who do you think you are? And you know what he thought? I'm the son of God. And I know there's hurt here. And I know there's that there. And I know this looks like nothing's happening there. And I know there's something that's happening there. But I just made a declaration. And the Spirit of God is upon me. And he's anointed me to go to these places. And you know, there were some victories. Because of, because of a word? Because of a promise. You've got to remember that Jesus was the promise. He was the fulfillment of that promise that he opened the book. Now, let's go to the, kind of the closing verse before we get to Psalms. 1 Thessalonians 5. 
1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. It says, rejoice always. Like even, even when there's not things in the barn, right? Rejoice. You know that there's a hope of heaven that we can rejoice about heaven right now? <laughs> like, I'm going to see heaven. I'm going to be, I get to go to heaven because Jesus made a way. I get to go to heaven and see my mom, my grandma, my loved ones. My, I get to go, I, I can rejoice right now about heaven. I don't have to wait. I can have joy right now about promises that I've yet to walk in. This is the same way I could rejoice about heaven. I can rejoice about healing. I can rejoice about like what I don't see at the very moment. I can rejoice right now. I can have joy, fully rejoice, like true joy of a promise that is for me. Okay, keep going. He says, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances underline, circle, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. For this, this right here, this right here, this right here, this. You know, this, like this. So here's what I'm going to say is um, thanks, outlines, thanksgiving, outlines, hope. Thanksgiving, out. this is what happened. This is the will of God for your life. The will of God for your life is the promise. Thanksgiving keeps hope before you. It outlines it. it, it literally, you, when you and I give thanks, it, 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 it frames the will of God. To where my, my picture or what I see before me is not one of hopelessness, but it's the will. There's promises of God that we've held, and, and, and like in this church service, God shows up, you hear from him, you're convinced, you might even have got goosebumps. whoop de doo But you were so convinced, and you were like, yes, that's it. I know that that's who God said he would, I, I know, I heard it, I, 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 I he bore witness with my own spirit the same way he bears witness that I'm a child of God. I know. I'm convinced. But I begin to not talk about what he has done. And I change the frame. And, and as much I change the frame, yet you do this on your phone. You ever been looking on somebody else's phone? They're like, oh, hey, let me show you this. And they, they go over and they're showing you like maybe like four or five pictures. And you're like, oh, hold on. Hold on. No, no, no. Where was that? And you need to go back to the frame because you can't find it in that frame. You can't find it. You got to go back. It change, you can change the frame or you can hold the frame. And this is the will of God. What's the will of God for your life? We, we just looked at it. Promises. Praying according to the will of God. This is, let me maybe make it a little simple. 1 John 5, 13. This is the confidence that we have when we approach him. If we ask anything according to his will, and we know he hears us, we know we have what we ask. Amen. Okay, great. What's his will? Well, 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 through 4. He's given us precious promises so we could be partners together of what his will for us promises. So I ask according to his will. His will is his promise. And this is the will of God. This right here. The framing of God's will in my life, keeping before me, not junk, but keeping before me hope, it takes me giving thanks so that I can outline the promise of God in my life. How many times have we fallen and we've got to get back up? Listen, if you, anybody plant a garden? Listen. Sometimes we think, um, how do I say this? Because I don't want this to seem like a works mentality. But it is truth. Um, so I want it to be heard clearly. You can repent. You can repent and be right back with God. Absolutely. But when you and I let go of the seed of God's word that he's grown, been growing in my heart, and I, it must be planted again must be planted again and when it's planted again it must be tended 
If you've ever had a garden, I could plant maybe that corn and it could come knee high and I could get discouraged and get frustrated and till it under. Just be frustrated, just done with it. The seed remains. The seed remains. But it has to be planted again. I still have the seed. But I, 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 I don't just pick back up into that place where I believe at the level that I once tended. Does that make sense? And this is where, where a lot of times in the church, maybe you've been born again and you've been saved for a number of years. Maybe you could testify of God's goodness and in miracles and signs and wonders that you once saw. But just because you once saw them, just because you once tasted of that which is to come, doesn't mean that you are at the place where you still are tasting. Sometimes we've tasted and we think we're good, but yet we've let the cares and the, the jading of life mar the character and the word and the promises of God to the point that we question a promise. And I'm here to tell you, the seed is still there. The seed is still there. The seed of promise. The one who's watching over to perform it, to do what you and I can't do. Not one of evolution, one of creative ability power, authority, heaven's assistance here in natural things. But you got to plant it again. The, the fruit of the Spirit only is possible when you and I receive the Word of God. And the Bible says, with meekness. It, it doesn't say with, with your wiseness. It says with meekness, which means, you know, I don't, I don't understand it all. But if you say so, I, I, this is me. I don't understand it all. See, you know what meekness is not? And this is one of those things that's like, God, make me meek. Help me to be meek. Meekness, meekness is not self-sufficient. And as a guy, especially as a guy, you can... Try to shore up your weaknesses or provide everything so you can do it yourself. You know? And we think that the DIY is only the YouTube. Everyone wants to do it themselves. Everyone does. This is why it's so popular. I'll just do it myself. I'll just do it myself. I'll just do it myself. You know, there was a time when we call our friends. ask for in the church there was a time when your barn burned down and there would be a called a pole raising party 40 guys would show up for two or three days and build a guy a barn help love, help, hope. See, there's something about when I have help. I have hope. If I have help. What kind of help? Heaven's assistance. Did you know heaven's assistance? The same spirit that rose Christ Jesus from the dead, that same power lives in you, dwells in you, did you know heaven's assistance? Sometimes we're so many times looking on the outside and, and, and hoping that something would move in, but he already moved in. Brightness comes from help. You know what I found when you want to reap help? So help. Well, there's something special about help, isn't there? He's our helper. 
this is this is the will of God. Thankfulness outlines and helps to define the hope of tomorrow because you hold clearly the promise of God. Celebrate the promise, not just the fulfillment. Buy the clothes, get the crib, paint the room. Celebrate the promise, not just the fulfillment. Get the pink, get the blue, blow up a balloon, do something, eat a cupcake, reveal. We got some things right. Celebrate the promise, not just the fulfillment. How do you do that? Thanks. Giving thanks. This is the will of God for your life. It goes on to this. I want to go all the way to Psalms 91. I want to put it up there if you can. Do <laughs> you know doubt and fear keeps you from rejoicing? Doubt and fear keeps you rejoice from rejoicing or free makes you freeze or makes you retreat. What will I look like if I believe God for this and it doesn't happen? What will I look like? Well, probably not very many people are looking. But the enemy likes to come with a message. Message? 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 With a message. Ha, thank you, Lord. Psalm 91, he says this. He says, uh, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Let me just pause there because of what we said, talked about. First Corinthians, I think, where we talked about the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus dwelling in that place here and now is the blood of Jesus is what does that. That you and I have that secret place. We're able to enter in to the, what was behind a veil. The veil was torn because of Jesus. When he was crucified, the veil was torn. When he, it was torn. And that, that, that tearing of the veil, there was a declaration that that was a satisfied payment. Like tore up, done. Have you ever seen, oh, that's bills paid. And he, he said, go next verse. And then he says, I will say to the Lord, not just of the Lord, but I'm going to say to the Lord, you're my refuge. Father, you're my refuge, you're my strength, you're my fortress. Father, I trust you. Here, here it is. What do you want us to do, Lord? What do you want us to do? To have, to, let's be a doer of the world. Good news shoes, that sounds great. But what do you want us to do? Because it seems like it's really easy to get off the path. Say something. Tell me, you're, you're my provider. You're, you're, you're my redeemer. You're my restorer. You're my, I will say to you, Lord, you are in the middle of whatever's going on. In the space between, on the path, on the path. You're the one that provides. You're faithful. You, what, what is it you got to say? You got to say something. And this psalm, it, it, it was a psalm that was to, to war, bring war against demons, messengers. How do you war against messengers with a different message? And his angels, he's given charge over you. And they, they go at his word. At his word. So this is why his promises are, and his word, his word. This, this, this chapter right here, this, this or cha yeah, 91. He says, my refuge, my fortress, in whom I trust. I trust you, Lord. He said, now, now he switched to I. And now he says, he'll deliver you. He'll deliver you from the snare. It looks like you're caught. There's no way out. He'll deliver you from deadly pestilence. Guess what? Next verse. Uh, and from he'll deliver you from pestilence, from snail. He'll he'll cover you with his with his feathers under his wings. That pinions is the beginning of a feather, which is speaks to like if you ever seen like if you raise a chicken's wings, you probably don't have chickens, but there's not just like the same feathers out here that there is here. There's a, they're, they're a lot smaller and they allow the warmth, the warmth of that hen to hold the chicks, you know. He said he'll cover you, he'll hold you close. So you, this is, these are declarations. He will, he's going to hold you close. He's going to hold you close. He's going to, under his wings, you're going to find refuge in him. His faithfulness, he's a shield. He's, listen, let me tell you, he's, he's a shield for you. He, he's what you can trust in. He's going to hold it all together. This is, these are the 
This is not just, oh, that's a good thing. I'm glad you're a pastor and you told me something nice. Well, I guess we should just sit down because I guess I'm coming with enticing words of man's wisdom and we're just void of all the power of God. It's got to... If the power of God only is on a pulpit, then we should just close the church. Because this is where we're equipped. This is what the Bible says. This is where we're equipped to go for our ministry, for your ministry. You don't have to fear. He says, you'll not fear. Hey, listen, you don't have to fear the terror. You don't have to fear that, no, or the arrow that flies by day. I love this. The pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. It seemed like everything was just, just fine, right in the middle of everything, just boom. Hey, you don't have to fear that. Listen, God's got you. He, he favor, shield. I mean, all the, a thousand will fall at your side. You know, it's, it's amazing what happens when you and I aren't afraid because we heard his promise, we heard his word, and you know, faith has actions. There's, there's promises and things that he's spoken to you, that there's actions that are just, he's just waiting for you to take that step. Just take the step, just take the step. Just take, I didn't say, just take the step, walk by faith. I didn't say jump out into oblivion, some leap of faith, and you'll not find that in the word, but you will find a step. You'll find the next step, and you'll find a step, and, and the, there's a pr- picture of promise that God is a desire that he's placed in my heart. And, I, and, and it's confirmed with his promises of his word. And Father, I thank you for that for my children. I thank you for that provision for my family. I thank you. And, and there'll be a direction. Take a step there. Take a step there. Take a step there. Why? Because he goes before me. He's my rear guard. A thousand fall at my side, my right hand, but it doesn't come near me. Well, I just don't know about the economy, what's going to happen Listen, the economy's never been stable. Nothing, it's always changed. There's only one thing that always remains the same, and it's the Word of God. It's never changed. And that's what we build our life upon. Not an interest rate. Hello. Not a bank. You don't build, not not a 401k. The market could crash tomorrow, and you could lose everything. There's no security in money. It's a lie. None. It's false security. And it causes you and I to lull ourselves and be irresponsible of both things that really matter. You know what you'd find? You'd find help would be everywhere. Help would be everywhere if everything crashed. Because you couldn't do it alone. And your money would mean nothing because it's all in a computer. It's just a Oh, let's just give the, we're going to pass out more stimulus checks. See, let's just hit the nine instead of the one. It's about what we're doing. I feel good now. I got a number. So I was going to right next. It better not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the rec- I can't, recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, Lord. It's such a declaration of one who knew God, who, who visited the Lord on the mountain, who God wrote on the tablet with his hand. Moses, he came down having experienced the glory, having experienced, he, could, he had to cover his face because of the, just the reflection, the afterglow of the power and the glory of God was too much for the people. This is the one that wrote this psalm about a declaration, I will say to the Lord, he is this, I'm going to tell you who he is. I'm going to tell you what he'll, and then he says, oh, my Lord, you know, uh, go to the next verse. I think maybe I, oh yeah, oh, let's go, they'll go before, uh, back to where I picked up, left off, you know. Yeah, thank you. Who is my refuge? Next verse. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. Again, this is what, these are promises. This is what he says. What do you say? It's what he says. What do you say? He will give his angels cons- command. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. You know, you can have that for your kids. You don't have to be afraid every time they go to school. 
Oh, well, there's this threat, and there's this threat, and there's this threat, and there's this threat, and there's a bomb threat today, and there's a gun threat tomorrow, and there's an anthrax threat the next day, and there, there's threats everywhere. Father, I thank you for angels round about my children. Thank you that you guard and you keep them. They don't have to dash their foot against a stone. Father, I thank you for that. But you know there is that testimony. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. This is why it matters what you say, and it also matters that you're testifying. It matters that you're testifying. One of the, mo- the, great, one of the number one strategies of the enemy is to keep the message of God out of your mouth because the angels go at his word. And sometimes we just, just, we don't realize that we're in a war and we just get, just whatever, whatever it'll be. And we just, it's the enemy's goal, looking around, seeking whom he could devour. He's vicious, but God is mighty. On the, their hands, they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against the stone. Next verse. You will tre- tread on the lion, the otter, the young lion, the serpent. You will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. This is that verse 14. God starts talking in verse 14. When he calls on me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and I will honor him with long life. Fear has its grip, strength and death. With long life, I'll satisfy him and show my salvation. Um, this is the way the, the Lord spoke it to my heart. Until you're satisfied. Until you're satisfied. You can have that. You can have until you're satisfied. You don't have to be afraid of death. I'm talking, I'm talking to, to, to 40 year olds in here. The, the, well, I feel, what was that feel? That, that was gas. <laughs> Real things. Until you're satisfied. This is, that's, that's what's, your, what's, what's your testimony? There's a promise right here. With long life, I'll satisfy you. And what? Show you my salvation. I'll show you my strength. I'll show you what I can do. You can, you can put all your faith and all your trust into your G, non-GMO, blah, 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 blah. Or you can trust the Lord's salvation and do what he tells you to do. And do what he tells you to do. And you can say, Father, I thank you that I can live with long life, with life, until I'm satisfied. Do I want to see your kids' kids? Kids, 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 kids. I don't know. Maybe you'll say, I'm done. You feel like I finished my race. That's okay. Because it's not the end. There's a hope of heaven. This is just... God's good. God's good. Let's stand this morning. Thank you, Father. We love you. We say thank you. So let's, why don't we just close our eyes? Why don't we just lift our hands to him just as um, more and more not like a receiving, but more just like 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 a hug, like almost like you're, I know this may sound funny, but almost like a dance, like you're dancing with him, like a slow dance, just kind of like more intimate is what I mean. Father, we love you. Can we just say thank you? Will somebody just thank him this morning? With your mouth, we thank you, Father. We thank you. We say thank you. Thank you for being good. Thank you for hope of a future. Thank you. We just say thank you. Thank you for coming to us with your word today. Thank you for doing a work. Thank you for your assistance here on earth, here on earth as it is in heaven. We ask you for that right now. We ask you for just, uh, for I thank you right now for restoration of relationships here on earth. I thank you for finances, the wisdom, not just the increase, but the wisdom Uh, the understanding, uh, how to use the directions, clear direction, the, the, uh, the place of decision not being one of confusion, but one of clarity. 
Father, thank you for, for just health and healing in bodies today, for minds being made clear. Father, we give you praise and we thank you that the enemy is still being stilled even now as we give you praise. Father, thank you. We praise you for long life, for giving us long life until we're satisfied. Father, thank you. We say thank you this morning. Thank you. Thank you for sending your word. Jesus made flesh to bring us another word. And so, Father, I thank you for just the strength of your word in this house. I thank you for the strength of your word to these people, not with uh, what would be enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration and power. We just receive today the strength of your word concerning every situation. Heaven's assistance here on earth. The strength of your word. You have said it. God has said it. Almighty has said it. It cannot be otherwise. We just receive that. The word. We thank you for that fruit. And we say, we will say of the Lord, we'll give you thanks. And we thank you for the framing, the outlining of hope, the hope of promise in these people and in our hearts and our families. Father, in this community, in Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Before we close, uh, if you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to give you an opportunity to give your, give your, give your heart, give your life to him. Call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says if you um, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus says, Lord, surrender your life to him. You'd be saved. If that's you this morning, wherever you're at, um, I'd like you to lift your hand if you want to give, give your life to Jesus. I, thank you for raising those lights. I don't know if there is anyone here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anyone at all. You've got to give your life to Jesus. You don't know where you'd spend eternity. I don't see any hands. But I'm going to lead you in a prayer for you online. Maybe maybe you're online. Um, maybe, you, maybe you weren't bold enough. Maybe you should ask the person next to you real quick. Do you know Jesus? Go ahead and ask them. Ask somebody. Thank you, Lord. Is there anybody that needs to lift their hand? I don't know, right? Sometimes we get too comfortable in our pews, right? Even though we're in chairs. No. Anybody else? No? Thank you, Lord. But this is good practice because it's as simple as this, that you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus says, Lord. And the same way that I would lead somebody, whether you're here in this room or online, you can do this with somebody at church, at school, at in the grocery store, on the street corner, when you sow some money in them, it doesn't matter where. Just make sure, just carry the message of Jesus. He's the one that died for your sins. He paid the price. Do you believe that Jesus Christ came and would be the payment for you? Would you believe on that? Yes, I believe that. Okay. Then here's what you all you have to do. Believe in your heart and speak with your mouth. Declare his lordship and surrender. Order your life with your words today. Just that's what we're doing. Ordering your life with your words. Coming under. Just say this after me. Say, Father, today I come under your lordship by receiving Jesus, your son, crucified rose again as payment for my sins. Thank you for saving me, but for also giving me the grace, the strength to will and to do after you. In Jesus' name. Hey, God bless you. If you need healing in your bodies or prayer for anything, we'll be up here afterwards. Other than that, we'll see you guys Wednesday night.